Well, we know that the UK has enormous reserves of shale gas. It's very high quality and it's in the right place in the north of England uh, next to the chemical industry. We know that the technology exists to get it out relatively cheaply uh, and almost certainly would work here. And we know that uh, cheap gas is an enormous boon to the economy. We've seen that in the US where it's enormously reduced gas prices, saving them something like a quarter of a trillion dollars just in the last three years alone and adding something like half a trillion dollars to their uh, economy by the year 2020. Um, so sh cheap gas, which is not only used for heating and making electricity, but also as a feedstock for industry, uh, would be an enormous benefit to the UK economy. We can't get that benefit from importing shale gas because it's expensive. So we have to um, uh, do it here ourselves. I think the environmental problems of fracking have been hugely exaggerated to the point where they've become myths. Uh, so for example, the uh, contamination of aquifers uh, is extremely implausible. There's a mile of rock between where fracking happens and where aquifers are. There's been two million operations of fracking in the United States and not a single one has yet been proven to contaminate an aquifer. And that's confirmed by the Energy Secretary and the head of the EPA in the United States. As for the other things, le methane leakage, earthquakes, radioactivity, the chemicals involved, uh, the amount of water needed, these are all enormously exaggerated as well. So for example, in the case of chemicals, they actually use 95% less chemicals in hydraulic fracturing than they did 20 years ago. And that's because they discovered suddenly in Texas in the 1990s that a thinner, more dilute water worked better than a thick gel. Well, in the United Kingdom, uh, Mineral rights, apart from hydrocarbons, are often still privately held, but hydrocarbons were nationalised in the 1930s. That hasn't stopped other fossil fuel industries from rewarding local communities and indeed rewarding individual landowners like open cast coal mining, which I'm involved in. Um, but uh, it's nonetheless obviously the case in Pennsylvania or Texas or other places like that, that because individual people own their own land and the, the hydrocarbons under it, that the industry has to come and reward them to get it out. And you see great benefits in rural Pennsylvania, you know, people who've rebuilt their barns or, um, uh, you know, added an extension to their house because there's a little bit of fracking nearby. You can still get that benefit here. And in fact, the fossil fuel industry in this country does um, obviously want to get local people on side. So it does uh, find a way of, of rewarding landowners and local communities. Uh, for the use of their land uh, for uh, oil and gas and coal production. The reason people object to certain technologies like genetically modified food, for example, is because they see no benefit to themselves. And I think if the public could only have the facts explained to them in a sober way, they would. Uh, most of the opposition I find is based on myths, is based on things people have been told which simply are not true. Thank you.